If you ever find yourself unfortunate enough to be in the comments section of a social media post referencing Formula 1 or MotoGP, there's guaranteed to be at least one person there to say how their choice of sport is better than the one being referenced. As people who consider themselves fans of both sports, admittedly having been MotoGP fans for significantly longer than F1, we feel like we find ourselves in a good position to compare them and to find out which one could be considered better. One of the most common things we see from MotoGP fans is how they consider Formula 1 to be boring due to a lack of overtaking and close racing. Whilst we consider this to be a somewhat fair statement, we think there is more to F1 than close on track action. If your thing is watching a group of racers riding to the limit in a constant battle to outdo one another, with a last corner overtake and a drag race to the finish line to decide who wins, then MotoGP is certainly the sport for you. As MotoGP fans who are quick to judge F1 as boring without spending the time to properly watch or engage with it, this was certainly our reasoning. However, in recent years, we decided to give F1 a chance. Despite having less constant action than MotoGP, it's still in most cases an engaging experience to watch. Watching if teams who have taken a gamble with their pits and tyre strategy succeed, safety cars coming out and seeing how the different teams respond. With some solid battles happening on track and some great rivalries in recent years, it certainly provides the audience with an interesting viewing experience. Despite not being the adrenaline-filled, edge-of-your-seat action MotoGP audiences are used to, Formula 1 is entertaining in a different way, with strategy playing a significantly more important role. However, this means that some Formula 1 races are complete bore fests, with even the most die-hard F1 fans struggling to remain engaged due to a lack of action and strategies going as expected. However, with the amount of times MotoGP fans have witnessed Marquez dominate all the free practice and qualifying sessions and lead the race from the start to the finish with a comfortable lead over second place, races where Dovizioso will take the lead and maintain a slow pace at the front to conserve tyres with a group of riders following him, and previously races where Lorenzo would be riding 10 seconds ahead of the rest of the riders for the whole race, it is unfair to claim F1 is consistently boring when not every MotoGP race is on par with the 2015 Phillip Island race. The one area I'd say where MotoGP beats F1 is the lack of dominance from certain teams. With Formula 1 there are three teams which seem to dominate the podium places. When they finish the race that is, with the rest being considered the midfield. However in MotoGP it is common to see all the teams, barring one or two, being able to run in the front group and there is a smaller gap between the top level and bottom level teams in regards to funding and overall speed. When watching motorsport, watching the races with no idea who anyone is and what they are like off the track can provide a pretty numb experience even with the most exciting races on track. Rooting for your favourite racers, wanting them to beat their rivals and having those you aren't a fan of is an important part of watching and fully experiencing motorsport. As a result, the personalities and people involved plays a significant part in having a good racing series. This is also an area where F1 and MotoGP seem to mirror one another. You have the fan favourite icons of the sport, the people dominating, the Brits not afraid to voice their opinions, the wild Australians, the up and coming talents and the rich kids. As a result, it is easy to be a fan of races in both sports with a wide variety of personalities to pick from and there is no clear winner for the best lineup. However, national pride and rooting for people from your country is an important part of any sport and motorsport is no different. In F1, you have drivers from France, Germany, the Netherlands, the UK, Thailand, Spain, Australia Russian, Mexico, Canada, Finland, Italy and Denmark. This huge range of nationalities mean audiences have a wide range of drivers to support at their home races and across the season, and there's an overall more inclusive environment. When you compare this to MotoGP with its primarily Spanish and Italian riders, with one South African, one Portuguese, two French, one Brit, one Australian and one Japanese rider, it is easy to see why F1 has a large worldwide appeal, and MotoGP seems to be dominant in Italy and Spain, but very little elsewhere outside Asia. Watching a race from home is still a great experience, and arguably gives you the best view of the race. However, going to a track to watch a race is a must for any racing fan, and the experience there is an important factor in how good a race series is. When going to see Formula 1 or MotoGP, the experience is pretty similar. You can expect to pay a fair chunk of money for a general admission ticket, pay a fair chunk more for a grandstand seat, and pay a small fortune to get VIP access or a tour around the paddock. When you compare this to going to see a smaller national race series, such as British superbikes or touring cars, in terms of your access, you're getting significantly better value for money by going to the smaller races. As you get paddock access and can fully immerse yourself in the racing world, 
with drivers and riders taking photos, signing autographs and interacting with fans, all included with the general admission ticket. However, keeping on topic in regards to Formula 1 versus MotoGP, the value for money is pretty much the same. What does differ is the experience you have once there. At a Silverstone MotoGP weekend, if you go and watch qualifying on a Saturday, you can expect a crowd similar to that of the smaller National Race Series on race day. As a result, you are able to get great views of the track and not feel too confined or unable to view from certain areas and have an overall good experience. Even on race day, the crowds are large and there is a great atmosphere, but the crowd isn't so big that you are unable to get a great view of the track. In contrast to this, Formula 1 at Spa, for example, is at the point where even on the Friday and Saturday, the crowds are so large that it's sometimes difficult to see parts of the track, and it is very much overcrowded. If you are a fan of large crowds and the atmosphere they bring, then F1 should be fine for you. If not, then the MotoGP might be preferable, as long as you want to attract like Assen or Mugello with insane crowds. The one big difference is in regards to the behaviour of the fans. Although F1 has had a lot of issues in the past in regards to hostility towards certain drivers, at the race we attended we witnessed none of this. However at MotoGP there was a few times where Marcus was booed by the crowd, in particular when he went onto the podium. So even though both sports have issues, from our first-hand experiences we have to say that the majority of both crowds are friendly, with some occurrences in MotoGP of hostile fan behaviour. Whilst this doesn't have as large an impact on audience enjoyment and deciding which sport people view as better, the business and logistics behind the racing is certainly an integral part of any racing series. The huge costs associated with Formula 1 means it is an incredibly difficult series to run in without being a large factory team or having a large and committed sponsor. With the Haas team in F1 losing their rich energy sponsor partway through the 2019 season and their lack of success throughout the year, and Williams operating at a huge loss to only running 19th and 20th place for the whole of last season, it is clear to see that F1 is a difficult sport to even run a team in, never mind a successful one. Across the past 10 years, the average amount of money spent by the winning team across a season is $285 million, an incredible amount of money. For mid-pack teams such as the old Toro Rosso team, the expenses involved are still high, spending $181 million in 2018 to achieve only a 9th place finish in the Constructors' Championship. Comparing to MotoGP, the satellite teams claim to only be spending 10 million to 15 million euros per season, and from this are able to compete near the top level. As a result, for the teams it seems MotoGP offers the better deal in terms of costs of results, with the teams spending less money, still being able to compete with the factory teams on a semi-regular basis. However, with a proposed cost cap of $145 million being introduced in the coming years for Formula 1 teams, it will be interesting to see how this affects the top teams and equals the playing field for all teams. Overall, despite there being large differences between the sports, it is unfair to say that one is objectively better than the other. Obviously people's opinions differ, with people preferring motorbikes to cars being a simple reason for someone to prefer MotoGP and vice versa. And the different style of racing is going to appeal to different people. As longtime fans of MotoGP and newer F1 fans, we fully intend to remain fans of both for the foreseeable future, and we recommend anyone who's a fan of either to watch the other and make their decision for themselves of which one they prefer, if any.